the video. Before we begin, if not already, please take a moment to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload. Comment your little heart out. And most of all, please enjoy. Now back to the video. In the 70s and 80s, audiences were just fascinated with cannibalism in movies. Maybe it's the shock value. Consuming another human being is just so taboo and disturbing. During this time, there was a growing interest in extreme and controversial subjects in cinema. Exploitation and horror allowed filmmakers to push boundaries with graphic violence and gore. Cannibalism is often associated with primitive, uncivilized behavior, which may be why so many of them are set out in a country, away from the so-called civilization of the city. I hope you brought your appetite. This is Motel Hell. You're eating out my heart and soul. Not to be confused with Gordon Ramsay's Hotel Hell. Not as much cannibalism that we know of. This is farmer Vincent Smith, played by Rory Calhoun. He runs the Motel Hello. But the O is dying, and this kind of reminds me of the time the Shell station near my house lost their S, so I was buying gas in hell. This is also home to farmer Vincent's smoked meats. Definitely not human flesh. It was just a joke Louise started. He rambles through the bushes looking for meat to smoke. Have you tried Grinder? If you could read this, the bitch fell off. That was never funny, Bo. <laughs> Farmer Vincent has been setting traps on unsuspecting travelers. Hmm, I'll call him Chuck, because he'll make good Chuck. But the girl, Terry, is too pretty for Stu, too alive for a shallow grave. Nancy Parsons is Ida, Vincent's sister and co-owner of this redneck abattoir. I spend all night cooking and you bring home takeout? But this girl ain't for eating, she for loving. I'll give you one guess which country this takes place in. Bring the kids. Kids love our slaughterhouse. Meet Piggy. Come for the meat. Stay for the childhood trauma. Sheriff Bruce is Vincent and Ida's younger brother. <laughs> if this seems too much like incest, just turn your volume down. <laughs> Vincent tells Terry that Bo, her boyfriend, died in the crash. He passed away this morning. He's not lying. He's just early. He's dead? He's got excuses why she can't go see him, and she just goes along with it. In this county, we're allowed to keep you. Here, step away from Officer Hardon. Where'd you bury him? In my tummy. He wasn't getting any fresher, and my customers need ribs. Terry has no place to go, so she may as well stay. Smart girl like that would come in right handy, too. We'll feed her chocolate and brush her hair. She'll love it here. The very fact that you're sitting here with us proves that it was preordained. Yeah. And that's how we started a cult. Bob, the health inspector, drops in for a visit and wanders into Vincent's secret garden. This ain't right. The veggies are feisty. You have to pick your Cabbage Patch Kids when they're ripe, people. Oh well, one more for the meat pile. No rest for the meat smokers. I should really rephrase that. Vincent captures a three-man rock band. To store his victims before the big day, Vincent and Ida have been burying their victims up to their necks in the garden. To keep their screaming down, they cut their vocal cords. So not only are they serving human meat, it's probably meat with various infections. But no preservatives. Mmm, pass the areola. Terry fits right in with the fam. Well, roll him in sugar. Bruce is kind of sweet on Terry. She's cool even when they tell her about barbecuing a dog. You knew she was eating a dog? That must have been a big bun. The Little Mermaid remake already looks terrible. Heh, <laughs> chicks dig the tractor. There is no free range in this dojo. The meat is immobilized and fattened up with beer bongs. Well, it does go straight to your thighs, and that leads to bigger drumsticks. Not one to victim blame, but if you can't spot a fake cow, especially these, oh, those city folk. One girl gets grabbed and the other drives off. Bruce's idea of a romantic date. Cock-blocking inspiration point. Go find your thrill on some other hill, kids. Let's get that mega moving on, too! And I mean now, let's go! Shocking abuse of authority. Does that make you hot? <laughs> oh, Sandy! Somebody help me! Somebody help me, please! What? Is it because I turned off my body cam? I didn't say that. The SA is put on hold when a call comes in. <laughs> Vincent won't give up and follows her at high speed. I said follows her at high speed. High. High speed. Oh, fuck it. I think she just gives up. Vincent just pushes a car into the lake and calls it a night. The date wasn't all that, and besides, it's plain to see where her heart is leaning. We forgot this place actually gets customers. 
This time it's a couple of swingers. There's a weird sequence where they think Vincent and Ida are also swingers because of a series of Three's Company caliber misunderstandings. This motel wound up on a list of swinging motels. They shouldn't have listed themselves under meat smoking. My eyes. Still, it's kind of cute to see a couple sharing. Still, it's kind of cute to see a couple sharing interests. Vincent considers taking on a Padawan. Ancient art of meat smoking. I told you it's the tractor. They literally pull. You're not ready for the secret man meat. So let's go Tubin instead. This is a ruse for Ida to try to kill Terry, but she just fails. Nearly drowning is like a aphrodisiac to this gal. Hey, 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 easy, DiCaprio. But Vincent is an honorable guy, so no sex before marriage. We should be married first. Are you proposing to me? But I guess she accepts. Who's gonna be Vincent's bride anyway? The poor thing that he rescued from the motorcycle accident. Why won't she marry me? She barely tolerates me. He thinks she's in trouble, but she's fine. But naturally, there must be something wrong with her. Otherwise, it would be Bruce up on that cake and not Vincent. Bruce digs up some dirt on Vincent, namely evidence from the crash. Time to make the sausage. First, Vincent hypnotizes the next contestants so they don't feel pain. And yes, that's Cliff Clavin, soon to be Ratzenberger's. That one just wrote itself. That won't work. You can't hypnotize people with <laughs> lights and stuff. That's. <laughs> I feel like these sausages would make you high. Self-picking crops save so much labor. Bruce tries to rescue Terry, and he tells her that the crash was not an accident. But Bowbricker takes him out. We're gonna teach you the finer points of meat smoking. Is it spring break already? More of the garden escapes. Still up for the family business? Oh, she gets it. We've been spitting in the meat for years. When you get your thriller off Wish. The Garden Gang attacks Ida. When they bite you, you become a summer sausage. What right do you have to play God? Are you human? Yes. You are what you eat? I guess. I rest my case. She's not feeling the Soylent thing, so Vincent has left little choice. Bo, Terry's boyfriend, never died. In fact, he drops in to save her. <laughs> get him, Vincent. Punch him in the throat. I know I'm rooting for Vincent, I'm just a fan of Mr. Calhoun. Farmer Vincent is victorious. Now it's Bruce's chance to play hero. Hey, uh, try not to think about that whole date rapey thing I pulled earlier. That's all, folks. Now, one of the most epic things I've seen in this movie. Chainsaw fight. <laughs> oh, that's so bad for the blades. But this is so cool. Bruce wins this epic battle. Terry is rescued, and Vincent makes a shocking deathbed confession. I used preservatives. Oh, hell no. Uncle Roger, get him. Uncle Roger, sat now. They go check on Ida. She's buried in the secret garden. But don't worry, she's only buried up to her knees. Oh, the other way. Well, all right then. <laughs> the place finally lives up to its name. The same way Dirk Diggler got his name. And that was Motel Hell. Motel Hell is a horror comedy released in 1980, directed by Kevin Connor. It balances dark humor and gore, creating a tone both unsettling and funny. It's gained a cult following due to its blend of horror and dark humor. It's best appreciated as a dark comedy. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Terry is such a fluff character, there's no real spine to her. She mostly gets yanked from scene to scene like set dressing or a plot device. Bruce as the hero is weird, especially after having seen this part. Yeah, just ignore that and move on. As insane as these two are, they're oddly likable. And Nancy Parsons was still a lot scarier as Beulah Balbricker. The acting is cheesy, the performances are over the top and campy. Rory Calhoun just delivers as Farmer Vincent, a charming yet deranged businessman. Parts do make you squirm and being buried up to one's neck is sure to trigger some audiences. And I don't have to tell you that cannibalism is wrong, unless you're in a plane crash. Motel Hell is three and a half Bs. If you enjoy offbeat and unconventional horror comedy films, Motel Hell may just be worth checking out. Checking out because it's a... Well, motel. They can't all be gold. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell. You know the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles.